Hello, I'm Dr. Chris Martin, and today on Growing Better, our focus is one of my favorite groups of trees, species in the genus Quercus, or the oaks. Did you know that there are more than 200 species of oak worldwide, and 60 of them live in North America? Now, if you really know your trees, you might have noticed already that I am standing amidst some oaks right now. In fact, in this spot, in this forest, I can grab three different species of oaks all growing together. I find oaks fairly easy to recognize by their leaves alone. Most oaks have elongated leaves with a strong mid-vein and lobed margins. Now this species, northern red oak, or Quercus rubra, has bristle tips on the points of its lobes. Contrast this with the white oak, or Quercus alba. This species has lobes with rounded tips. If we take this one step further, you get the bur oak, Quercus macrocarpa, that not only has rounded lobe tips, but also deep cuts as we move towards the base of the leaf. These deep cuts are also known as sinuses. And I think this one's a little bit stuffed up. Macrocarpa translates literally to large nut. And this is a nod to the thing that makes oaks perhaps most famous. They're nuts, or they're acorns. Now, acorns come in all sorts of shapes and sizes, from little buggers like this to massive acorns like this one from a species in Costa Rica. These nuts make oaks one of the most valuable trees in our woods. But as you'll see today, oaks also have great value as shade trees on our streets, around our homes, and in our schoolyards. Today we're going to be working here at uh, an elementary school in Plattsburgh, New York. We're going to be planting three trees as part of an Arbor Day celebration. Here we've got three uh, nice oak trees coming in, and I chose oak trees for this tree planting because it's a good, strong, long-lived native tree that not only looks good, but provides some wildlife value as well. So as the years go by, we'll have lots and lots of acorns produced by these trees, and hopefully lots of uh, animals and birds that come around to eat those acorns and use the tree for nest sites and things like that. Uh, I'm removing a lot of this turf. We're going to be putting down mulch around the tree that's going to protect the soil from drying out but also keep weed seeds from coming up around the tree. A little bit less maintenance but also less competition for uh, some of that moisture that these new, new roots are going to need as they start to emerge from the, the roots that are already present on the root ball. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to dig this hole a little bit wider and a little bit deeper than I really need to if I were to look at the root ball of the tree. And that way we can sort of amend the soil in the hole, loosen it up a little bit, and this will be a way to encourage new root growth. Generally, when you're planting trees, you really do want a well-drained soil. Last thing you want to do is put them into a hole where they're just going to sit and the water's going to pool up in that hole because trees need to breathe too. Roots breathe just like every, part, every other part of a tree. Uh, so you don't want to put them in a spot where they're going to just basically drown. I see a lot of people planting trees in bad spots and then the trees have a very similar response when they're drowning as to when they're too dry. They wilt. And often people will see that wilting uh, uh, action on the tree and assume that they need to water more. And they end up dumping more water on a tree that's already drowning, making the problem even worse. What's your name? Lindsay, nice to meet you. Hi. What's your name? Haley. Haley, nice to meet you too. You guys are the volunteers today. Why don't you guys hold the end of this pot and I'm gonna pull the tree out. There's only one thing I enjoy more than working with plants, and that's sharing plants with kids. Children cannot help but be swept away by the passion for nature that is inherent in all of us. And they certainly aren't afraid to show it either. Keep holding it! Keep holding it! Hold it down! Boom! Okay. Good job, guys. Good job. Okay, actually, it's kind of in a perfect spot right now. So if I could have a couple of people put some soil back in with a shovel. You take this shovel. You want to grab that one there, Colby? I'll use my hands. Okay. You want to... Fast forward a century or more and you've got a tree like this one here. A stately giant that is just as at home in the forest as it is here on the streets of a city.
as an urban tree, this oak provides obvious benefits to the people of this community. It gives a shade. It provides an aesthetic element that you're not going to find with anything but a tree of this size. However, in the forest habitats where trees like this live by nature, they confer an ecological benefit that's probably even greater. I hope you've enjoyed this edition of Growing Better with the Oaks. We'll see you later. Mm. Berries. Mm. Chris, we're, we're still rolling here. We're trying to finish this. <laughs> right. I'm Dr. Chris Martin, and we'll see you and your friends on the next Growing Better.